The new Galactic Legends are here in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, and RSG is here to provide you with the guide. So, we're starting off today with the Sith Eternal Emperor Guide. So, everyone, get ready as we go through the details on how you can unlock Sith Eternal Emperor. But before we get into those details, just a few little comments here. If you like the content by RSG, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and down below in the description, we have plenty of other ways that you can support RSG. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the details behind Sith Eternal Emperor and how you can unlock this. So let's go ahead and start out with Tier 1 as we go through the details on what you need to know. Now, the main character, of course, that you're going to be using in this one is Darth Sidious. So Darth Sidious is a character that a lot of people right now don't feel like they have a lot of use for. So while we try to minimize what you need to use in order to kind of eke in through these tiers, the one thing we will recommend is that you do, in fact, put the Zeta on the unique. Now, the Zeta may not be the greatest thing in general. However, for the purposes of this event, it is quite good because you not only gain the turn meter chance when somebody dies and you are facing four Jedi in this phase, but you also get the increased potency and that potency turns into health. So that health is going to be crucial for this as you are trying to survive against four different Jedi. Now, Let's go ahead and take a little bit of look into how we modded this. Now, all of this is, by the way, by Sir Loki, one of the RSG members here. And he has provided this, so we've gone through this and we tried to analyze this. There are some restrictions that you guys will see that we are able to do, and we'll talk about that. But let's look at how Loki beat the event and what our recommendations are as well. So, as we go ahead and look at what is going on here, you can see that he has modded this with a speed set and a potency set. Now the key to this is going to be speed for Sidious as well as trying to get his potency up. So we would definitely recommend not only a potency cross but also a crit damage triangle because you're still trying to do a lot of damage output so you're going to want that crit damage triangle as well as that potency. So our recommendations for that are going to be crit damage triangle, potency primary on the cross, but a speed set is going to be the key. Now, why is it the key? Well, let's take a look at what the stats are once we get to that point. The Darsidious we used was 330 speed. So this is a lot of speed on the Sidious. Sidious is already one of the faster characters, and now we have boosted his speed up even more. So 330 seemed to be actually a fairly good number. It may be difficult for some of you to get, but here is the reasoning behind why it was 330. When we now go look into the combat of this, now this is where you're going to start off with Darth Sidious. Now I mentioned that there are some restrictions on what we were able to actually figure out. What those restrictions were was that because these involve tickets and energy, we weren't able to test these out a lot to try and figure out the exact numbers. In previous events where we have unlimited attempts, we've gone through and tried to figure out the exact speed of the characters that you are facing. However, because this one had a lot at stake with the energy and the tickets involved, we did not have the ability to do that much detail. So what we have done instead is try to estimate what the speeds are of the characters. So when you take a look here, we have Darsidious at 330 speed. Looking at the turn meters of the Jedi, we then estimated what the speeds are for each of the other Jedi. The key to the 330 though is that this allowed us to get two turns on Sidious before uh, Aegon and uh, Sacy, the two Jedi on the side that we don't have in the game, actually took a turn. You'll see that we estimated Aegon around 164 speed, which means that Sidious at 330 is getting two attacks first. So it's somewhere around that range that you want to be. Again, these are estimated speeds because we didn't have the ability to do multiple testing to try and play around with mods. So what you see here, Estimated speeds that give you a rough idea about what it is. Now, as long as you are above around 213, you are going to go first, 
but the higher you can go, the better, because then you outspeed two of the Jedi if you can make it to 330. Now, before we show you the combat, I want to answer one question that I'm sure a lot of you have. Can you do this without the Zeta on Sidious? Now, while we do not recommend it, there is potentially a way to do it. Now, what we talked about is what happens and what we recommend, assuming you have the Zeta. Let's talk a little bit about the exception, which is if you don't have the Zeta, you do have to mod these a bit different. Now, you will want to get above 300 speed without a speed set. What you're going to want to do is try to load up on the health because your Sidious is really going to need that extra survival. That's what you get from the Zeta when the potency turns into the max health. So now you're trying to compensate for it, but you are going to need very good speed secondaries in order to get above 300 speed. Now, we talked a little bit about the speeds, and the faster you go, the more turns you're going to get. You're facing four Jedi, so it's important that you have a lot of survival. So what are you going to be looking for these? You're going to still do the crit damage on the triangle. However, your arrow, you're probably going to want something like a crit avoidance arrow. Now, hopefully you can do that. If you have to go with a speed arrow, then go with the speed arrow if you can get above 300 speed. But crit avoidance is going to be your better bet. And that cross is no longer going to be potency, it's going to be health. But once again, we do not recommend this. This is going to be a little bit of RNG, especially when there's so much on the line with energy and tickets. So go for that Zeta on Sidious to make this a safer bet. But if you want to gamble and you have the mods for it, go ahead and try it this way. So what we're going to do next is jump into the combat with Sidious with the Zeta so you can see how this combat completely plays out and then see how you use the different abilities in action. So while you watch this, you are going to want to take a note of a few things. You are going to want to start out with the AoE by Sidious. You're going to want to land those dots because those dots really help with his basic. So the basic is going to help you get more damage output and you're going to need that to keep on going. But the other part of this too, when you're attacking the Jedi with single targets, try to attack the ones that have the expose. That's going to allow you to deal more damage to them and quickly take them out. The goal is to try and get out all of the Jedi as quickly as possible, except Mace. Reminder, Mace cannot be defeated in this phase, so you're killing the other three and leaving Mace for the end. So that gets us through Tier 1 of the event. Now we're going to jump into Tier 2, which is when you are going to use Jedi Knight Anakin in order to take out Mace Windu. Now this is again really cool because they finally did more stuff with the storyline. We're seeing a stark difference in the storyline being told with these two new Galactic Legends in Seat Eternal Emperor and Jedi Master Luke compared to what we saw with Rey and Kylo. So really liking the event overall with this as well. But as we get into Tier 2, you are going to be using Jedi Knight Anakin. So let's take a look at some of the details that we're talking about with Anakin. Starting off with his abilities, you don't need his Zeta on his unique for this event. We have it maxed out here, but the Zeta for Anakin is used for Padme. So just keep that in mind as you're working towards it, the Zeta is not required for this event. However, the Omegas on the rest of his abilities are going to be critical, especially with his AoE. Now, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we look at the combat. But interestingly enough, the AoE is going to be one of the more critical parts for his kit. So make sure you get that Omega at least on his special. So next, we're going to take a look at his mods. Now, his mods are uh, going to be one that you want to focus on speed as well. The speed does come into play here because you are going to be trying to outspeed Mace Windu and try to get more attacks in. So the speed that we have here is around 312. We did do the estimates again, so I'll show you those in another minute. But the other key part to this, you are going to want a crit damage triangle. So Jedi Knight Anakin is going to need to be fast, but you're also going to want him to be able to do that burst damage because he does have to burn down Mace Windu. Now, the overall difficulty of this one is considerably less than the first tier. We've seen more people struggle with the first tier. This one is a little bit more straightforward. So as we get into the combat, let's go ahead and take a look at what we see as the estimated speeds. So once again, we had Jedi Knight Anakin in our attempts at 312. However, 
Again, looking at the turn meters and trying to brute force it a little bit, the Mace Windu is 225 speed. So that gives you a little bit of a target as to what you want to have the speed at Gen Jedi Knight Anakin as kind of a minimum amount. But that is the speed that you're looking at, but the faster the better because you're going to want all of those extra turns. So this is what we're looking at now. Let's go ahead and jump into the combat once again so you can see how this exactly plays so, out. Looking at this combat now, you are going to start out with Jedi Knight Anakin's AOE. That's right. Even though there's one target, you're starting off with his AOE attack. And the reason for that is you want to get sh make sure that you get your offense up, your crit chance up, and your protection up from that Omega on his special because Jedi Knight Anakin needs to survive through the combat. So now that gets us through Tier 2. We are now going to head into Tier 3 as we now look at the final tier that for you to unlock Sith Eternal Emperor. Now for this phase, you are going to be using your EP and Vader. Now they say mission units, but of course it's going to be using your stats. So let's take a look at what the stats are that we use for EP and Vader. Let's start with Vader, because Vader is going to be a little bit simpler in that you are going to focus on trying to get as much burst damage as possible. So you are looking at a crit damage set and a critical chance set. However, the one thing we are going to recommend is also a potency on the cross. Now, the reason for the potency on the cross, you are going to be landing dots. You're going to want to try and land as many as you can, but that is kind of a secondary thing. The key to Vader in this fight, especially in the first phase, now this one does have two parts to it. The first one's going to include Vader fighting Jedi Knight Luke. And the key to this is that Vader is landing the ability block with his basic. However, keep in mind that his basic cannot be resisted or evaded by Jedi, which means that you don't need potency for Darth Vader. What you need is the potency just for the dots, but you need to make sure he's getting big hits on Jedi Knight Luke in order to survive that first series of events. In addition, the reason for the ability block is that you don't want Jedi Knight Luke to be able to land those blinds and the heals. So the ability block becomes key, which is why the basic to Vader is probably going to be your most important ability in this phase. As you complete that, then we're going to look at Emperor Palpatine, who is going to be part of the second phase. Same thing with him, however, he doesn't have the same thing about the potency. He is going to need his potency, he is going to need his speed. But why he needs his potency and speed is going to always be a little bit different. Now, with Emperor Palpatine, you are going to be using his AoE, but his AoE is not going to be able to stun Jedi Knight Luke. So why are you using all this potency? The reason for the potency is for the offense up. You're going to want Palpatine to hit as hard as possible. And what helps him hit hard is going to be landing those shocks, which is why we recommend the potency on the cross. So if you look over here, that the Alper Palpatine that was used has over 100% potency. So that is what you're looking for with Emperor Palpatine. You are looking for that high potency to land those shocks using that stun ability, not for the stun, but for the offense up in order to try and get some big damage on Jedi Knight Luke in order to get through that phase. So let's go ahead and start looking at the combat so you guys can see how exactly this plays out with both Vader and Palpatine in their combat against Jedi Knight Luke. So with Darth Vader, one of the keys to remember is that even though he is under Emperor Palpatine, you are going to start off with his Merciless ability. Reason being, you're not going to be able to land enough dots with his AoE ability in order to gain that full turn meter. So you gain an extra turn by making sure you do the Merciless first, followed by his AoE. Then, the goal is to try and keep ability block on Jedi Knight Luke as much as possible. So you're going to continually do the basic, and you can throw in the AoE every now and then. You will highly unlikely use the saber throw at any point, because you're going to want to keep those debuffs on him. So, again, it's going to be largely a basic on him, and then you're going to use the Merciless with the AoE afterwards in order to get yourself an extra attack. As you get into the second phase, second phase is the standard way that you will play EP. You're going to be trying to land those shocks and gaining that offense up. You are likely not going to use his third ability, so you can just kind of ignore that right now. Just focus on getting those shocks 
and gaining that offense up, and then eventually you're going to burn through to Jedi Knight Luke and then end the event. So once you get to that point, you have now completed all three tiers and just need to do this cycle again in order to get your unlock of Sith Eternal Emperor. That is it. That is the guide on how you unlock him. All of the first three tiers are completed now. So go ahead and have your fun and good luck with the event. Be on the lookout for more guides. And if you already aren't, hit that subscribe button so you can follow RSG's YouTube channel for any new content that comes out. And in the meantime, check out some of the other videos that you see on the screen and have some fun watching those. So once again, I am Infinity with Reality Skewed Gamers. Thank you for watching this guide on Sith Eternal Emperor and... We will see you next time. Take care, guys.